Congressman Dan Beneshek, Jerry Cannon, and Alice Bull participated in a forum hosted by the League of Women Voters. This is what they had to say on tax reform. The uh, uh, cap on uh, uh, FICA taxes, 6.2% FICA tax, uh, should be eliminated. It's a regressive tax. It allows the wealthy people who make over 100, I believe the figure is 117,000 or, or thereabouts, uh, there's no tax on that portion of their income. And so uh, I would see the, uh, I would like to see the corporate tax lowered to about 25 percent. I'd like to see some safeguards put in to prevent uh, our corporations from doing what we call, uh, we read about lately called inversion, where they're taking uh, their business overseas. We need to stop that. I think uh, tax, uh, uh, the tax advantages for uh, taking jobs uh, outside of the country, uh, that needs to be ended. Um, I think we need to find a way to make sure that uh, there is equity in our tax system. We need, to, we need to get the spending under control so we're not taxed so much either. And we're not saddling our children with debt. Um, you know, that's the reason I'm here, in eliminating waste in the government, making sure that the government spends its money wisely uh, and focuses on the things that government is supposed to do are the things we need to focus on to get the spending down so that we don't have to be taxed so much and so complicated. On health care and Medicare. Additionally, the issue uh, of um, universal coverage was brought to the fore in, in the admission or non-admission of uh, uh, Thomas Eric Duncan to a hospital in Dallas. He did not have insurance. His family thinks that because of that, that's why he was turned away. The hospital denies it, but the hospital has had many contradictions. I think this is a factor to be taken into account. Uh, frankly, the problem with the president's health care bill is it takes $700 billion out of Medicare to pay for the bill. That's uh, $2 billion here in Michigan's first district, Two, uh, $200 million right here in Grand Traverse County. So uh, Munson Hospital will be getting $160 million less over the next 10 years to pay for the same patients that are getting Medicare treatment. Hospitals all around my district are cutting back and laying people off. It's just like any major piece of social legislation that we have ever passed. Um, you, you don't just throw it out. You gotta, you gotta roll up your sleeves, you gotta sit down, and you gotta work on it. You gotta amend it, reform it, revise it, whatever you gotta do. Uh, it was a compromise to begin with. Um, if there's things that need to be improved in it, let's get after it. Voting 50 plus times to repeal it is a waste of time. On climate change. The folks in this administration are instituting policies related to climate change that are going to dramatically increase energy prices. Right now on the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, they're, facing, they're faced with a major increase in their energy prices due to uh, policies of the administration related to climate change. I would support uh, uh, a carbon neutral uh, uh, program to uh, sort of get after that in a, in a sense. Um, you know, the earth is warming. Uh, the ice is melting, the water is rising. Uh, we got to decide what it is we want um, to do to, to make sure that we're protecting uh, those cities that are in low-lying areas. Reduce energy demand by over half, uh, meet the remaining demand with wind, solar, and energy storage, shift fossil fuels subsidies, including military, to clean solution, institute zero-waste laws, and encourage climate-friendly, sustainable agriculture. On education. And so I, I see some value in the Common Core, but I, I would never want to see, uh, you can't believe that one size would fit all. And so you got to really sort of integrate that with uh, what's going on at the local level uh, in the local school district and obviously uh, the states uh, involved in that as well. And we need to have people be able to have more electives. You know, right now, like vocational education, we've sort of lost that in many of our school districts. You know, vocational education, when I was in school, it was an opportunity to get metal shop, auto mechanics, drafting, Home Act, there was a lot of opportunity for that. Now we've lost that because of the requirements at the federal level. I don't uh, know much about the issues, Common Core, et cetera. I would only ask you uh, to look at the, again, at my website and see that I have studied a variety of issues, given thoughtful answers, and if I were elected, uh, I would certainly give attention to the issue of education. On gun control. You know, I firmly believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the right to bear arms. I don't think that kids should be bringing guns to school. I uh, certainly don't believe that. Yeah. But um, I don't think guns should be in school. I, I... I'm all about responsible gun ownership. 
Uh, guns in schools, you know, that, that's, a, that's, that's a bad recipe. Uh, that, that's not a good, and I, I understand in the state law that it is uh, allowed, I get it, uh, but I don't think, uh, I think that needs to have, a, we, we need to take another look at that because uh, we're creating a situation where uh, you can only imagine the potential things that could go wrong. On immigration. We need to reform the way people come here legally. I mean, it's, it's actually very difficult to move into this country legally. We need to make that easier for the people that we need to work here. I think everybody that's here illegally, whatever the number is, 10 to 15 million, um, get back in line and go through the process just like everybody else did. I'm second generation Irish in this country. My family uh, went through the right process. I think everybody else should as well. So I don't think this should be a blanket amnesty, but let's uh, get them out of the shadows, get them in line, let's start the process, and let's get this done. That uh, people should be allowed to cross into the United States from Canada or Mexico the same way that people cross into Michigan from Ohio. And on the Ebola outbreak. You know, I think the American people would be much more comfortable if there was a uniform plan and we contain the disease in Africa. Uh, I've talked to, you know, I'm a, I'm a doctor, I understand infectious disease. I've talked to infectious disease specialists. They simply don't understand what the CDC is doing here by allowing these flights to continue. Why hasn't there been an influx of American doctors to, to Africa? This is where uh, the problem is. This is where it needs to be solved. I'm against the, um, you know, having uh, the travel ban for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's not going to work. And, there'll be, and what we don't want to have happen is that people uh, who are possibly infected or have been exposed um, go underground and find a workaround way to travel to another country uh, that's not on some restricted list and then come in. Then we would not know about them at all. Right now, uh, when the flights are coming out of that part of Western Africa. You know, we got people there. We know the airline. Uh, we're checking them for fever. We, we know that. We don't want people to go into hiding and trying to come to the country in, in a lot of different ways.